Let's take a look at BMW's LMDH hypercar today, the M Hybrid V8. Like the competitors, BMW didn't have much development and preparation time for the new prototype race car. They partnered with famous race car manufacturer Dallara and used the Italian's well proven LMP2 monocoque. In terms of engine, it's beneficial to use a turbocharged engine with large capacity, so you have the best tools to get the maximum out of the BOP rules. For more information on this, check out my other video below. BMW could choose between three engines. The P48, which is the 2.0-liter 4-cylinder DTM turbo engine. The P63, which is the 4.0-liter bi-turbo V8, which the M8 GTE was using. Or the P66, which is the naturally aspirated 6-year-old 4.0-liter DTM V8 engine. The P48 wasn't reliable enough for endurance racing, the P63 too heavy. And so they decided for the old 4-liter P66 DTM engine. This naturally aspirated engine already produced more than 500 horsepower with two 29mm restrictors. Without restrictors, it could already breach the overall power limit for LMDH cars. But again, to get the most power under balance of performance regulations, they additionally turbocharged the engine. So the old naturally aspirated engine is the P66-1. A first turbocharged development version was the P66-2. And the actual race engine now is the P66-3. So let's have a look at the engine. It's an engine with a cold V, which means the turbochargers are sitting at the sides. The wastegate sits underneath the exhaust and we cannot see a cooling for it. Wastegate pipe and main exhaust merge into one exhaust with a metal sintered element. The engine's air intake comes from the roof scoop, guides the flow through the filter and towards the turbocharger. BMW now decided to use air-to-air -air intercoolers, which make this the busiest engine bay of all four new LMDH cars. Acura and Porsche use a compact package with a water-to-air intercooler integrated in the intake system. And the Cadillac is much simpler because it's not turbocharged. The BMW engine is not a fully stressed engine because there is an additional carbon fiber pipe to support the rear of the car. Since the chassis comes from the Lara and cannot be changed anymore, the cooling has to happen in the side pods. And so BMW packaged a large water radiator in the side pod first and a large intercooler underneath. We talked about the efficiency of stacking two radiators above each other in the Acura video before. In such an arrangement, the lower radiator will get most of the airflow and hence cooling. If there is not enough cooling for the water radiator, the resistance of the intercooler would have to be increased to balance air flows. Instead of just blanking the radiator, this could happen through turning vanes like in F1. Also here, we can see the connectors and water pipes on the inside of the car, which allows for a tighter bodywork and better reliability, in case the car touches something with its side. It's a U-flow water radiator and an I-flow intercooler for less resistance. The sides of the roof scoop feed the gearbox cooler, but that's not everything. The BMW still needs to cool the low temperature circuits of the hybrid system, and he does that with additional intakes in the sides and radiators behind the radiator package. In contrast to the Acura, the BMW is using the rocker mounting points of the x standard gearbox. And we can also see the large brake cooling duct. We have to keep in mind here that the hybrid system is contributing to brake performance at the back, which means that the rear brakes are stressed less. In other hybrid categories like F1 and LMP1, the rear brakes have smaller dimensions and can only work together with the regenerative braking. Here, the brake cooling duct looks like there is no hybrid system. And we can also see that BMW blanked more than half of its brake cooling at the back. Nice to see here are the aerodynamic bodywork clips. And that brings us to aerodynamics. BMW uses the large kidney design at the front with integrated brake cooling ducts and dive planes at the sides. Also we can see the headlight cooling inlets. And we can even see the nose from behind with large front wing elements. The air can then be released behind the front axle. There is one slot on the top and one further back at the side. This lower outlet usually uses side gurneys to create extra downforce. 
At the BMW, they guide the air around the side pod and inside the car before the rear wheel. So you could think it's for an efficient airflow along the inside of the rear wheels and out at the back like Toyota does it, but this inlet is for the third radiator in the side pod package. To make sure enough air is getting to there, BMW uses large turning vanes at the sides. At the back of the car we can see a huge cooling exit and additional exits for the upper gearbox cooler. So they definitely wanted to be on the safe side and these look like the largest cooling outlets of the four new LMDH cars. So all in all the BMW LMDH prototype is an exciting new race car with its turbocharged DTM V8 engine. But they didn't have much time to develop and test it. Their test schedule was very tight since the rollout only happened last July and their tests were a bit bumpy with many drivetrain issues. BMW says for the 24 hours of Daytona they will be happy to finish the race. So let's see how they will perform. Let me know how you like the BMW M Hybrid V8 in the comments below and consider to become a B-Sport Club member to support the channel and make videos like this one possible. See you at the next video.